geometry folks. Today we're going to be talking about triangle congruence theorems or shortcuts, which are just theorems that prove triangles are congruent or that two triangles are congruent. So what you're going to need today are your notes, calculator, writing utensil, and a foldable that you should have already gotten. So the last thing that we talked about in this class was congruent figures. So this picture um, below shows two triangles congruent and we know that because we have all the sides and all the angles showing the pairs are congruent of angles and sides. So the first one that we know is like angle I is congruent to angle O, angle G is congruent to angle M by those markings, angle E is congruent to angle Q by those markings, and then for the side lengths we have GI is congruent to MO, and we have EG is congruent to QM, and EI is congruent to QO. So when we talked about congruent figures, we had to have all of these markings shown in order to say, yes, for sure these two triangles are congruent so that we could write that congruent statement saying triangle IGE is congruent to triangle OMQ. Or if we were given the congruent statement, we knew all of those facts to be true. So the point of today's video with triangle congruence theorems um, are to only use three pieces of information from each triangle in order to prove things congruent. So the triangle congruence theorems are going to be things that we use to help us prove triangles congruent while only using three pieces of information. So instead of looking at all six pairs of angles and sides that are congruent, we only need three of them with these theorems. Okay, so let's say we were to construct triangle ABCD, ABC such that the side length of AB was 12 inches, the side length of BC was 10 inches, and the side length of AC was 8 inches. They didn't speci specify anything about the angles of the triangle that we're creating. But if you see in the picture over here, <clears throat> a lot of students actually did this. They created some triangles such that those three side lengths were true. And what we found was that all of those triangles, no matter how you wanted to construct it, turned out to be the exact same shape and size. So that gives us the side 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 theorem. The side 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 theorem is saying if three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides of another triangle, then it must be the case that these two triangles are congruent. So what we're saying is if you see these markings, so add these markings in on your foldable. If you see these markings on two triangles, you know then that the whole two entire triangles are congruent or that A is congruent to D, B is congruent to E, C is congruent to F. Okay, so now let's look at if we were to construct a triangle, let's say MNO, such that the measure of angle M is 60 degrees, the side length MN is equal to 8 inches, and the measure of angle N is congruent to 45 degrees. So some students in my class did this too. They constructed triangles with these three requirements. Notice how we only had three pieces of information. They didn't tell me anything about side length NO, and they didn't tell me anything about side length MO. But if you look at the picture of all the triangles in the picture, these triangles, those side lengths ended up being congruent between triangles. So this gives us the angle side angle theorem. And the angle side angle theorem says if two angles and the included, this is the keyword, the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and an included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So when we say included side, what we're saying is that congruent pair of sides is sandwiched between the two pairs of congruent angles. So for example, if we had angle A congruent to angle D and angle C congruent to angle F, they're saying that pair of congruent sides has to lie between the pairs of congruent angles. So that's the angle side angle theorem. So if we see these markings on any two triangles anywhere, we know that the rest of those triangles have to be congruent by the angle side angle theorem. Okay, let's look at another example. Um, if we made triangle UTS with T, the side length TU being six inches, the measure of angle T being 90, and the, the measure of 
the side length TS being 10 inches, we can see by the picture again that it produces congruent triangles. So that gives us the hypotenuse leg theorem. So the hypotenuse leg theorem says if the hypotenuse in the leg of a right triangle is congruent to the hypotenuse in the leg of another right triangle, then it must be the case that these two triangles are congruent. So the hypotenuse on that triangle is BC and the hypotenuse on this triangle is EF. And it doesn't matter if these two are congruent or if the, this pair of legs are congruent. All we need, and I'll erase that, is one pair of congruent legs to prove that the two triangles are congruent. And another reason why we know this, you guys, is if you think back to Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, if we had something like 5, 5, 3, and 3, we could use the Pythagorean theorem to show that this side length and this side length have to be the same length in order if we use the Pythagorean theorem. They would have to be the same length because that is a true statement from the Pythagorean theorem. So that's also another reason why the hypotenuse leg of a right triangle is con is automatically congruent. Like you don't have to show me any more using the Pythagorean theorem. You can just know if the hypotenuse and one pair of legs are congruent, then the whole two triangles are congruent. Okay, now if we made a triangle, if we constructed a triangle with like a ruler, protractor, compass, all that stuff, um, such that the side length GH is 8 inches, the measure of angle G is 55 inches, and the side length GI is 6 inches, we can see in the picture of the students who did construct all these separate triangles that they are congruent. So that gives us the side angle side postulate or theorem. And that says if two sides and the included angle, included angle, I'm going to underline that, of one triangle is congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles then must be congruent. So let's look at how we would mark this. So if we have a side congruent to a side, another side congruent to another side, and then that included angle is saying it's sandwiched between those pairs of congruent sides. So when we read this, here I'll show you what we would do with a highlighter. So when we read the triangle for side angle side, we start side angle side, side angle side. So that's how we know that this is the side angle side um, theorem because that angle is included or in between, sandwiched between those two pairs of congruent sides. Okay. If now we were going to make a triangle such that the measure of angle R is 60 degrees, the measure of angle P is 40 degrees, and the length of PQ is equal to 8 inches, you can see in the picture, again, that it's creating all these congruent triangles. They're all the same shape and the same size, so they're creating congruent triangles, which gives us the angle-angle side postulate. Okay, so that says if two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and a non-included side of another, then the triangles are congruent. So what that looks like is if we have angle A congruent to angle D, angle C congruent to angle F, and then a non-included side. So it's not in between those two angles. So like here and here. That would be angle, angle, side because it's not included. So remember angle side angle looked like this angle side angle said this and this this and this with an included side and this is not that it's angle angle side where that side is not included okay if we had a triangle and all we know about the triangles is that all the three pairs of angles are congruent so that like the measure of angle D, the measure of angle E, the measure of angle F are 60, 80, and 40 respectively. In the picture, we can tell finally that this is not producing congruent triangles. These ones are not congruent. They're not congruent. So what's happening is if we have a triangle so that it, this, this is definitely not 60, 80, and 40. It looks more like 60, 60, and 60. What's happening is like it's getting dilated or it's just being blown up or it's just getting shrunk. So 
Um, when we know that all three pairs of angles are congruent, they do not produce congruent triangles, they produce similar triangles. Okay, and then the next one is if we had a measure of angle K and then two side lengths of a triangle, the best triangles to look at in this picture are this one and this one. Those two are not congruent. They're not congruent, okay? So that shows also that this theorem does not prove two triangles congruent. So which two, those last two pictures were the ones that I was showing you, where we had three pairs of angles not congruent, or congruent, but that didn't prove the triangles congruent, and then an angle and two sides. So that means that the, the angle, 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 well, it's a postulate, does not prove triangles congruent, because like I said, you can have different sizes of the triangle that are similar, but these ones are not congruent. And then the angle side side, which is also a naughty word, right? Um, it does not always produce two triangles congruent, because look at this, this triangle here and this triangle here. We have a pair of angles that are congruent at 48 degrees. We have a side at 20 and 20 in length, and then a side of 16 and 16. But if you move this in like we did to get that smaller triangle, or if we move it in a little more, we can see that the angle side side theorem does not work. So these two forms of theorems actually do not produce congruent triangles, okay? And that's another way to show, like, if you were to move this up here, that those two triangles, this guy and this guy, do not produce congruent triangles, okay? So in a little bit, we're going to look at some examples on why these theorems are important or how we're going to use these theorems. But before we do that, I want you to remember, when they ask you, are the two triangles congruent? And if so, what theorem did you use? You can never use the triple A or the ASS. So remember, no car insurance and no booty, okay? And also, if you write it SSA, that's also backwards booty. So we don't want car insurance or triple A, and we don't want ASS or SSA, no booty, okay? And we're going to see what I mean by that in these couple examples. So you don't have to write anything down for these examples, but I do want you to follow along and listen with me. Okay, so the question we're answering is, does the picture give enough information to prove that the two triangles are congruent? If so, what theorem did we use? So we have triangle ABD and triangle CDB. We know that DB is a shared line between the two triangles. So this line has to, DB, that line segment, has to be congruent to itself, which means that, yes, these two triangles are congruent by the side, side, side theorem. Okay, now we're looking at number two. So we have a pair, two pairs of angles that are congruent and a pair of sides that are congruent such that these sides are included or sandwiched between those angles. So that means that we have yes, because that's an angle side angle. So that would be a yes. Angle side angle is the theorem that we use to prove these two triangles congruent. Okay, number three, we have two pairs of angles again and a pair of sides, except this time our sides are not included, which means that it's a yes and it's angle, angle side. And then the last one, we have two pairs of sides that are congruent with an included angle, which means that it's side, angle side, which would be a yes. Okay, what additional information is needed in order to use the given postulate? If we wanted to prove these two triangles congruent by side, 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 the other piece of information we would need is that this side would need to be congruent to this side. So the other piece of information that we would need is that RT is congruent to ZX. What other additional information would be used in order to give the in order to use the given postulate. So if we wanted to prove these two triangles congruent by side, 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 well, this we already know. We don't actually have to say that that needs to be given, but we do need this guy and this guy congruent. So we need DX, that line segment, congruent to ZY. 
Okay, side, angle, side. So if we wanted this angle to be included between two sides, um, that would mean that we would need this side and this side to be congruent, which means that we need W, U congruent to Z, X. Okay, and our last example for today. So we still need to state the additional information needed in order to prove these two triangles congruent by side, angle, side. Well, we know if we remember back way back from unit one that these angles are congruent by vertical angles so that's not something that's needed that's something that's known so we already know that rs is congruent to sb and those two angles are congruent so we just need that other side as an extra piece of information um, to prove by side angle side and we need that angle to be included or sandwiched between those two sides which means that we need this side Length, this side of that triangle and this side of that triangle congruent. So we need DS, that segment congruent to the segment ST. So that's the extra piece of information that we need. Okay, so these last eight examples or five slides ish um, are going to be examples like your homework that you have today. Okay, so I want to thank you all for taking such good notes and make sure you've watched those examples. And if you have any questions, as always, post on Google Classroom if you absolutely need to um, or get a hold of me uh, in some other way, shape or form. And if you have any other questions, I guess we'll just keep moving forward and hopefully I can clarify them. Um, thank you for taking good notes and I'll see you soon.